Okay, today we're going to go through using Postman as a way to send events as tests into Splunk over the HEC, the HTTP event collector. So I've got an example event here set up in Postman. So we're just going to set a source type, set the index, set the host name, and then here is our event. So anything within this will become the event in Splunk. So we'll see what that looks like in Splunk shortly. The event is sent over a post to this address in the top bar here. I'm using curly braces to use some of Postman's uh, features for tokens. So I've created an SSL token, a host token, and a heck port token. And then we're going to use those variables. You can change those as you need to. They're available in the UI up here. Now this isn't a Postman tutorial, so there's lots of those already available. Um, but up here we've got the settings we've got here. So we've got the host. The host will be present within the host value here on the left and it even gives you the details underneath um, where it's going to go to, whether we're using SSL or not. So I have uh, S specified here. So if this is enabled, we'll send over HTTPS. If it's not, we'll send over HTTP. And then the HEC port is just the default of 8088. Um, I put it as a, a variable here just in case uh, other environments change. In the headers, we have authorization, and then we're going to use the authorization token. And in the body, we selected raw, and then we've got our JSON here, which we can uh, edit as we need to. What we're going to do for today's test is send this to uh, Splunk Cloud Trial, which is a, a free version you can use for 15 days on Splunk. So that covers some basics in Postman. We'll just switch over to our Splunk environment here. So to get events in over HTTP, we need to enable the input. So you go to Settings, Data Inputs, choose the HTTP Event Collector, and we're going to add a new input here. So we'll call this Postman. You can set some settings here if you need to, um, if you want to. You can also enable uh, index acknowledgement which guarantees receipt of each of the events. This has some downstream effects so for the demo we won't do that but just read the documentation if you do want to look at that. Uh, we can choose whether it's automatic source type or um, a new source type even. We're going to select one and we're going to be sending JSON to this. You could make this a custom source type if you wanted to specify your own. We choose the app that we want to put it in so we're just going to put it in the search and reporting app because this is a demo environment here going to choose which indexes we're allowed to send to and we're also going to specify um, that it's going to go to the main index by default. Okay, So these two you can have multiple options of allowed indexes and then you're going to specify the index here. This will tie into the event that I'll show you shortly. So then we're going to do review, just confirm our settings and submit. Now we can start searching but we also the first thing we want to do is copy this token here. So this is our token for the HTTP event collector to give to Postman and then we're going to click start searching. So obviously there'll be no events yet because we haven't sent any from Postman but we'll come back to the screen shortly and run some uh, run some tests. So if we switch back to our Postman UI now if you wanted to see um, where we put the token this goes into the headers area here so this is our field that's available but what we're going to do is because we've set up uh, these um, tokens here we've got some in there so we're just going to actually go up to this top part here and specify the current value so we're just going to edit this so the first part of the authorization is Splunk followed by a space and then we're just going to paste our token in that we just generated from the other system and then we go back and now if we hover over here we'll see actually the new value that we posted so these two are different now so the initial is the default from my configuration and the current is for the new system. We're also going to set in here the host name. So this is the host name from my Splunk Cloud environment that we just started. Again you just click edit here and paste it in and click uh, click on the outside to get it to save. You can also just do this in the top part of the, uh, the URL if you want to as well. Depends how often you're going to do this. So what we can do now is we'll go back to our body and this is the data that we're going to send as I say so the source type is JSON which matches our input the index is main which matches our input 
if you wanted to specify different indexes here for different data types you can you just need to make sure as I said before on the allowed indexes section of Splunk you, you specify that those are, those indexes are available the host is my data 2 is the host name of the system sending the data for the test and this is the event body here so this will get sent up to Splunk as, as the text so now we've set our uh, configuration up here so we've got uh, Splunk token for authentic authorization and we've got our hostname set and our port we're just going to send the event now and here you see at the bottom we've got the code of success uh, sorry the text of success and the code of zero which means it was successfully sent to our Splunk instance so if we switch back to our Splunk UI now and run our search again we can see our event so here we've got the field of B is value 1 and value 2 and the field of foo is bar 2 here for this example so if we go back into postman we can change our settings here so we'll change this to bar 3 for example then value 3 and value 4 and then we're going to send that verification if you get a pop-up here um, around an SSL, a self-signed SSL cert. It'll give you a little message at the bottom perhaps for the, the Splunk Cloud Trials. Um, they're using their self-signed certificates for the HTTP event collector there. So just um, allow, um, or oh, sorry, disable SSL uh, for the testing. Um, obviously don't recommend that in production, but just for the uh, testing of the system you can do that. So we'll just switch back to Splunk. If we run our trial again, our test again, we've now got bar 3 and the fields of 3 and 4 in that value there in the array. So you see the fields on the left hand side are extracted out because um, it's JSON, so Splunk will do that automatically. And away you go. So that's a quick video for how to send events from Postman to Splunk's HTTP event collector as a test and just to see what the events look like in Splunk. Um, I've had API developers or um, testing developers use this to just validate what their system outputs are just before they send them to, to Splunk proper. It's a really uh, useful tool.